Before I signed up for the gym five years ago, I was so insecure about myself and my body. I was eating mostly processed or fast food and I had a lot of stomach issues. At the time, I thought being fit means following a boring diet, being hungry all the time and doing crazy workouts. I also thought getting fit is unrealistic for an everyday person or some people are just lucky to look that way. But one day I decided I have enough and I want to change not only my body but also my life and I signed up for a gym. It was a random day in October so you don't have to wait for January 1st for something to change. I was absolutely terrified of the gym. I was one of those people who thought never ever in my entire life will I sign up for a gym. The first time I ever went to the gym was so bad. For some reason, I also was very unlucky and my cardio machine at that day didn't work. And then I was trying some different machines, but I had no idea how to use them. So eventually I just gave up. I left crying and went to McDonald's that day. But I decided I want to try again and really make this work. So I showed up again to the gym. In the beginning you think so much about what if you fail? What will others think? What if you quit? But what if you don't? What if you keep going and you get the results you always dreamed of? What if you keep going and your life is going to change for the better? It is so scary to start something new. It is so scary to be a beginner in the gym. We are so afraid for someone else to see us trying and failing. But something that I realized is even worse than failing at something is if you never tried it. Hey guys, so today I want to talk about the three things that helped me change and transform my body. A lot of people always think there's this secret diet, this secret workout in order to get your dream body, your dream physique, but actually it is quite simple because you only need three things. Eating healthy, working out and being consistent. And now you might wonder if it is that simple, why aren't most people doing it? So today we're going to break down these three things and I'm going to explain to you step by step how you can change and transform your body, get your dream body, your dream physique with very simple things. Number one, and this is the most important thing, is to eat healthy. Eating healthy doesn't mean that you have to starve yourself or that you have to restrict yourself or that you have to cut out your favorite foods. I eat my favorite foods all the time and I'm gonna explain to you how I do it. Food is going to determine your entire progress. I remember back in the day, I didn't wanna hear it. You can't out exercise your diet which hurts I know if you want to lose weight you have to be in a calorie deficit and if you want to gain weight you have to be in a calorie surplus which doesn't mean anything crazy this means pretty much if your maintenance calories let's say are 2,000 calories if I want to lose weight I just subtract around 100 to 200 calories so I can eat around 1,800 calories and still lose weight. You do not have to count calories if you want to lose or gain weight. I personally don't count my calories. I don't track my macros. I did in the past so I think I have a good overview. I mean I think it's very hard if you have never done that to have an overview about how much protein and carbs and fats you should be eating. So how I like to do this approach of losing or gaining weight is number one you can track maybe for like one or two weeks your calories if you want to count and then be like okay I'm done now I know how much I can eat approximately or which is maybe a little bit of a softer and easier way is to just listen to your body because if you are in a calorie surplus you're gonna be a little bit more full than usual and the same goes for a deficit you're just gonna be a little bit more hungry which by any means doesn't mean that you have to be starving yourself whether you want to gain or you want to lose weight I mean you've probably heard this a million times but protein is so 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 important for any progress that you pretty much want to make why is protein so important I mean obviously it's gonna help you to build muscle if you want to lose weight protein can be so amazing because it keeps you full for longer protein also takes a longer time to digest in your body so it's also gonna 
burn more. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, but you can also lose weight without eating a lot of protein. It just depends on how how much muscle do you want to build, how much have you already built and you don't want to lose. Protein doesn't mean that you have to eat meat. You can also eat eggs. If you're vegan, you can also eat beans or tofu. There are so many different protein sources out there. You can also always help out with some protein shakes. I'm a big fan of protein shakes as long as you also get in enough protein with your diet. So protein shakes are like a little sprinkle that I like to add for some extra protein, but you should still get your protein from your meals, from your food. It's also very important to have healthy home cooked meals to eat at home for most of the time and not go out all the time and have your processed food. I know cooking at home can be very overwhelming and time consuming. So I'm gonna give you a few tips on how I like to keep it very, very simple because I am lazy, okay? I'm not someone who likes to cook for hours. Number one is finding easy meals that don't take a lot of time and that you still enjoy. I think easy meals are very different for for a lot of people because sometimes I watch videos online and someone says easy meal and for me it's like way too much cutting, way too much preparation and that's not an easy meal for me, okay? Just because I'm keeping it simple, that doesn't mean that I cannot eat healthy. One thing that makes having home cooked and healthy meals so much easier is to have repeated meals and have a list of your favorite meals. That doesn't mean that you have to eat the same thing all the time. I'm more of a person that has a hyper fixation meal. So I eat one thing for a long time until I get sick of it. At the moment, I'm not in a mood for cooking. You know what I do at the moment? Two slices of toast and then I put cottage cheese on top which sounds super boring, but then I spice it up with something. And this is not because I want to eat super healthy. This is because I am super lazy and I don't want to eat anything else. So I've been obsessed with cottage cheese, honey and chili for the longest time. Now I'm adding prosciutto to it because I've been in Italy and I've been obsessed with it. I just don't want to prepare anything for lunch anymore. And this is my meal. This has been my meal for months. <laughs> and we have meals that we repeat for dinner all the time. We're having our spaghetti bolognese, for example. We're having our burger bowls. We're having our Caesar salad. We're having having pesto pasta, we're having tortilla pizza, we're having fish with potatoes and veggies. You know, we have all of our basic meals that we like to repeat. And I also have a list of these meals because every time I do not know what to cook, especially, you know, when you want to go grocery shopping, you never know what to cook, what to eat for the next week. I go to that list and look through it. And then I know exactly what I can make. I also love to try and experience with new food. If I have time, if I'm in the mood, I always love trying new recipes. This is one of my biggest choice but I also need my meals that I can always repeat and go back to so I've been huge about meal prepping for the longest time honestly I haven't been meal prepping lately whatever number one you can try meal prepping if it works for you you just have your meals ready for the week and you don't have to think about it anymore I know it's a lot of work on the day where you have to do it but then it's just so rewarding or if you don't want to meal prep and you're like, I tried it or I don't want to try it. I mean, if you just don't want to do it because it's eating the same every day, you can also do flexible meal prepping, if you've never heard of it, where you just prep the ingredients and then you mix and match it together throughout the week in a different way. Or if you don't like meal prepping at all, which I totally understand, is at least plan your meals. Plan each day. I know it's a little bit of work, but plan what you want to have throughout the week. I also always have backup meals. For example, I always have frozen fish at home. I have frozen veggies at home and I have potatoes in a glass. So all things that don't go bad. If you don't have anything at home, I make this. I make this. It is so easy. It doesn't take a lot of time. You also need lazy meals where you can make them if you're super tired and you don't want to cook anything. So lately for me, this has been pesto pasta, either just with a side salad or I make some chickpeas in the air fryer because this is absolutely no work. You just cook pasta, put the chickpeas in the air fryer and then you put the pesto on top that I obviously bought. I'm not making my own pesto. Also make sure to plan out some snacks. I always have rice waffles at home. I have bananas at home. I always have my yogurt at home. PBJ, a PBJ toast is my also one of my go-to snacks. I always have that at home. And don't ever cut anything out because the more you restrict yourself, the more you're telling yourself that you cannot have your chocolate, you're gonna want to have the chocolate. You can have all of your favorite foods, some foods more in moderation, or you can learn how to make 
meals that you do enjoy at a restaurant at home in a healthier version. I love making burger bowls, for example. I don't want to have a burger every day, but I love my burger bowls. Or I, I have pasta all the time. I like to make tortilla pizza. Sometimes I'm having a real pizza. Which also brings me to the 80-20 rule. If you really want to change your body, if you really want to lose weight, you want to gain weight, build muscle, whatever it is, you need to eat healthy most of the time. But you can also have other meals, like I mentioned, your burger, your pizza, whatever you like to have, your donuts, your ice cream, everything that you pretty much enjoy. I never really strictly followed my 80-20 rule. I pretty much try to eat healthy most of the time, but I still like to enjoy my life, especially now in summer. I'm going to be out more. I'm going to be on vacation. We're having barbecues. We're going to go out for dinner more. I'm having maybe more drinks or whatever it is. I don't try to restrict myself. And sometimes you have a week where you eat out at a restaurant, I don't know, three, four times. And then the next week, maybe you only eat once out or not go anywhere at all. But it doesn't work if you just eat healthy like Monday, Tuesday, and then you eat unhealthy for the rest of the week. Or if you eat super healthy throughout the day and then you just overindulge in the evening. Or you eat maybe healthy throughout the entire week and then you go absolutely nuts and crazy on the weekend and destroy all of your progress. So there is an extreme. You just need to find your balance, what works for you. Also changing your mindset about eating healthy helps so much because if you dread it, if you say you hate eating healthy, it is boring. If you're in this constant state of you don't want to do this or you're doing it out of hate, it's just going to be so much harder. Romanticize eating healthy. Focus on how eating healthy makes you feel so much better. When I have fast food, doesn't mean that I'm, that I'm not having it, but if I have fast food a few days in a row, I don't feel good. I don't want to feel that way all the time. So I want to go back to eating healthy. I have my favorite healthy meals that I literally crave and that I want to have. And I'm sure there are healthy meals for everyone out there that you think are exciting and that taste amazing. You don't have to eat your plain boring chicken, rice and broccoli. The next thing is consistent training and working out. You don't have to train or exercise five times a week in order to be consistent. You need to figure out how many days you can really realistically train and then follow through on those days. If you cannot make it to the gym five days a week and every week you, you set yourself that goal and you fail, it discourages you. You don't want to do it anymore. I realized at some point that I couldn't make it to the gym four days a week anymore and I have to do a three-day workout split and that is absolutely fine. Also overdoing it at the gym is not being consistent. Just because you're training six days a week doesn't mean that you're gonna have more progress because rest days are also very very important. You also don't have to overdo it in your workouts. You don't have to do a million exercises each workout. I also thought for the longest time that I had to do this. Now I know four to five exercises are more than enough, especially on a leg day. Also, you don't have to change out exercises all the time and try new things and different things. I have my same exercises pretty much all the time. You can also find exercises that you do enjoy, which is also something that I had to learn because for the longest time I thought I, I have to do certain exercises. I mean, I do not enjoy hip thrust and I still do them because I want to grow my booty, obviously. But <laughs> other, other exercises that I do not enjoy as much, for example, reverse lunges, I barely ever do them. You will bear Barely will you ever see me doing reverse lunges because I just do not want to do them. And there are other exercises like split squats, which I prefer doing over reverse lunges. When it comes to the gym and seeing progress, something that helped me a lot besides eating <laughs> is following a program because a program is going to help you to progressively overload over time. If you do the same exercises, the same sets, the same amount of reps and the same weight week over week over week over week, you're not going to see any progress. If you just want to go to the gym and move your body, totally fine. Actually, this is something that I do at the moment. But if you really want to see the progress, you need to increase your weight, your sets, your reps, maybe even hold the exercise for a little bit longer because obviously you cannot increase your weight every week, every two weeks. Tracking your weight, this is so helpful. I didn't do this for the longest time and this helped me so much because every time I was like, oh, I don't really remember the weight I took the last time and then I had it, you know, written down. Something that's also very important is form over weight. You should always have the correct form. I mean, sometimes you also want to do, you know, a little bit of ego lifting and up the weight because I'm also guilty of not increasing my weight because I wanted to have a 100% perfect form. Please don't 
hurt yourself. That's not what I'm meaning. But sometimes you will not do the full range of motion, but you still want to go to that really, that's what I want to say, you, you really want to push yourself on your last one to two reps. If you're working out and you realize that your last one to two reps are not super heavy, you're not struggling, you're not, you know, almost dying pretty much, that's a sign that you can increase your weight. When I do hip thrust, I usually cannot complete my last rep because it's an exercise where I know I cannot hurt myself or anything. Not like when you're squatting, it's a little bit different. Or on the leg press, I, I really like to push myself and maybe my last two reps aren't perfect and maybe only half of the range, but I really push myself with my weight. Also, I mentioned it before, but rest days are important. You will see more progress if you take your rest days and if you're fully recovered. So I always, ever, always, 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 always only did two leg days. My leg days are super heavy. I don't want to do more than two leg days a week. Also very important, I cannot preach that very much because I don't follow it, but sleep. <laughs> sleep is very important. And the last thing, which sounds very easy, but this is also where people fail, is to simply never give up up if you do continue to work out and eat healthy you're going to see progress like i said in the beginning there's not a secret workout there's not a secret diet you just have to eat healthy eat your protein work out have heavy workouts progressively overload and then just you just keep going you will have weeks where you train more and you will have weeks where you train less and there will be weeks where life is getting in your way and you won't make it to the gym and this is where most people fail they just give up after that they're like okay i haven't been to the gym for a week or for two weeks so i'm just not gonna go again i'm gonna try next month or i'm gonna try next year just because you've been falling off doesn't mean that you have to quit altogether. I remember when I started working out in October, I went, I think for about a month and then I had a mini trip coming up and then I really had to study for a very important exam and I just couldn't go to the gym. I knew for the next three weeks, I have to take all of my time and study for this exam in order to pass. I just started going to the gym and I felt like a huge failure because I was like, I've been to the gym for a month. Now I've been not going to the gym for a month. I could have given up in that moment, but I was like, okay, whatever, I'm just gonna start going again after my exam. And then I went to the gym for about three months or something before the whole pandemic thing happened and all of the gyms shut down. I was just pretty much starting, but I wasn't gonna give up then either. I started my home workouts. I didn't have a home gym. I didn't have any equipment at home. I had two very tiny dumbbells with not a lot of weight, but I was like, I'm gonna make this work. I'm gonna work out four days a week as if I would be going to the gym. Even if I don't have the same machines, if, even if I don't have the same weights, I'm just gonna keep going. Your journey doesn't have to be perfect. Also, your workouts don't have to be perfect every time. Sometimes I go there and everything sucks. I'm not in a good mood. I cannot lift the same weights that I usually do. Everything feels super heavy and I just don't have a good workout. That is part of the progress. This is part of the journey. Important is that you, you still went. You still made sure that you got a workout in. Even if you're busy, even if you're tired, you are working out and you also know when to not work out if you feel sick or if you really feel like your life is taking over. If you didn't sleep enough, don't go to the gym. You don't have to force yourself if you're not feeling good. You need to find your own balance of, am I a little bit tired? Am I comfortable? And I just do not want to go because I would much rather stay at home and be comfy and cozy? Or am I really tired and do not feel good and I really cannot make it because I physically do not feel good or strong enough to go to the gym today? Sometimes on those bad workout days, I don't push myself as hard. Sometimes I just want to get that workout in, even if it's not the same weight, even if it's not super hard. I just worked out and that is fine. You don't have to have a perfect diet. Like I said, you will have weeks where you eat super healthy and you're on track and then things come along and you don't eat super healthy and there's a cake at work and you want to have it and then you visit your grandma and then you were craving chips and you fell off a little bit or you didn't have time to cook and you know things happen life happens like i said it is so important to just keep going make it a habit make it a lifestyle and even to this day i have weeks where i cannot make it to the gym because i i had exams all the time that i had to prioritize at some point i have other stuff maybe that is more important at the moment sometimes you are on vacation maybe you're getting sick and you cannot go to the gym important thing is that you 
keep going. There are a lot of people talking bullshit on the internet that want to sell you some diet pills, that want to sell you a workout even though they got a BBL. So it is up to you what you want to believe in. But there are very believable trainers on the internet and people that are educated and they will tell you that the results that they got, they didn't get them in one month, two months, they got them over years. So it will take a couple of months for you to see progress. So if you give up after a month, you won't see the changes that you want to see. Also on that note, very important, take progress pics. Take your videos, even if it's embarrassing in the gym, just put up your phone. I usually put it up against a water bottle so that it doesn't look like I'm filming myself. I wish I had more videos from the beginning, honestly, and I wish I had more photos from the early days, but I didn't take them. So please take them, take the videos, take the photos so that you can look back on it. Because now I look back on some photos and some videos, I'm like, oh my gosh, I've come such a long way. And even though I don't feel like there was a lot of progress, when I felt like I wasn't losing any weight, maybe the scale was working as I wanted it to. When I looked at pictures, I always saw I was losing weight or when I was building muscle, I looked at my pictures and I, I was thinking, oh my gosh, my booty did really grow and my shoulders and my back and everything just looks so different. You're not gonna notice the changes on an everyday basis. But if you look back on old photos, old videos, you will see how much change has happened and how much your body has transformed. And on that note, I also want to say, because I always mention it in my videos, photos and videos Videos on the internet, they are usually taken in a good lighting. They are taken posed. Don't compare your everyday body with very posed, flexed, maybe edited photos on the internet. Be on your own journey and compare yourself to yourself. It is always nice to have someone else as your body goals or being inspired by someone else. But at the end of the day, if you always compare yourself to another person who might not even have the same body type as you because we all look different, I think this is why it's so important that you are your own body goals. That was what I wanted to say to end this video pretty much. I hope this helped in any way. Please subscribe if you want to see more videos about fitness and food and vlog stuff because I've been doing a lot of vlogs lately. But I definitely want to do now more fitness videos again so if you want to see that please subscribe and give the video a like if you enjoyed it and other than that thank you so much for watching and i hope to see my next video bye